Some years ago, my niece said she wasn't happy at her art school. She was studying computer game design. The college didn't provide the right laptop and didn't have the right software. There was only one tutor who knew what he was doing. There were no female tutors. There was something terribly familiar about all this. It was just like hearing someone from Guildford School of Art in 1968. I could recognise the problems because I had met them already. They started here. Many, many years before, I had been for an interview for a Dip AD course at Manchester College of Art. I said I wanted to do a film. They said, go to Guildford. It's really good. They've got lots of lights. I went and there were many lights, but some big spaces between the film and TV lecturer's ears. No video editing facility, no script writing advice, a low ceiling studio and very little raw stock. It was very bad. But experience is something you get when you're trying to do something else. And we all got lots of experience at Guildford. The good people at Manchester were referring to a Guildford School of Art film course that existed many, many years before. When people say to me, what do I do? I can never explain it. It's like mm -hmm. saying, well, oh, I do cut books, oh, I destroy books, I'm a book vandal, you know, I, I do this, I do that. <laughs> um, and, the, you know, you, the words can never really, you don't know what they're picturing, really. Yes. When From the words, you don't know what they're picturing. Yeah. The only way yeah. I can do it is to show them something. But even then, it's not the same on a, on a flat screen, you know. This film has been made for anyone wanting to go to art school wanting to know what to look for, where to look for it, and a few warning signs. It features a lot of people who were students and staff in 1968 at the Guildford School of Art. This college no longer exists, for very good reasons. Just because many of the people in this film have taught art courses doesn't mean they're right. They taught then. Now is different. It always is. But hear them out. They've been creating since before you were born, and their advice will help you distinguish between the mundane, the useful, and the, oh my God. And they asked me what sort of work we'd studied, and I said, you know, Yoko Ono and Bruce Lacey. And this guy said, you know, the last great artist in Britain was Augustus John. Do you really want to go to art school? It's difficult to answer this if you haven't been to one, but realise that some students eventually discover they're on the wrong course, or they leave because they find it dissatisfying, or they really want to do something else. I didn't take Guildford seriously. It wasn't a place to stay. Um, I was thinking that I might go on to St Martin's, and I didn't apply, and I withdrew from the whole thing, only because I realised that I knew nothing. I went into the library and I picked up a book and I took it out and it was uh, the, brother, uh, the Brothers Karamazov. And I remember reading it and thinking that mm. this was new to me. And I looked all around the library and I thought, it's all new and you know nothing about it. I... Um, knew for a while that this was probably probably going to happen, that I was probably going to have to leave and go to university. Uh, without any doubt, in my 30 some odd years of experience, the most interesting students took the longest to kind of find their feet. I can remember people who just didn't seem to do anything for th two and a half years, and at a place like Goldsmiths, that we tried to remedy that, but if it didn't work, we didn't throw them out. 
And then in the last few weeks, they came up with work which was just fantastic. Creating something new is tough. If you're a research chemist, you'll have spent three years on your BSc, two years on your MSc, and at least three years on your PhD. So for eight years, you'll be learning the ropes. Only then will you be allowed into the research lab to do something new and interesting. As an art student, you must create something new from day one. Artists are an elite. They pay a price for being a member of the elite by exposing a little bit of their soul with everything they do. It's the difference between creating and repeating. I mean, actually, you, you were saying earlier on, what's the point of art schools? I don't know what the point is, apart from it gives you time. There's a website. Pick your shortlist and then look at each college's website in turn. Read the college website and the prospectus critically. Has it been updated? Is it still showing stuff from two years ago? How many grammatical goofs can you find? Is it merely a triumph of literary invention and nothing else? Going to art college means learning lots of things you never expected to have to learn. Talking to the students, I knew that one of the issues was that they had seen and read and applied to the school on the strength of a prospectus that offered yes, them all yes. sorts of things. Very smart prospectus, and it offered them something which they wanted to do. They came to the school and found that it wasn't there, that a rather shabby version of what was in the prospectus was being offered. And don't worry about the brochures. I mean, Farnham has bought equipment up the wazoo, but then they forgot to hire teachers who not, knew how to use the equipment. Mm. And so it's just a, 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 a the room is, is never used because it's full of unusable equipment. But it looks good in the, in the, in the brochure. Has the college won awards recently? Are they ones they should have won anyway, like the Teaching Excellence Framework Silver? Or are they awarded by evidently independent bodies? Are the staff good? Check the bios on the website. Are they prolix, buzzword rich or content free? Do they exhibit a wow element or a oh um element? What awards have they won? What and where have they exhibited? Yes. But I, I didn't, I, I wasn't a very good teacher, actually, I don't think. I, I could only, I was only interested in people who were interested. And in fact, you know, good teachers bring on everybody. And I, you know, to a certain extent, I could talk to students who were interested. I couldn't be bothered to people who weren't. And mm. they shouldn't have been there anyway. You know. Well, I've always said that if you, in your whole educational career, if you have one great teacher, you're very fortunate. You need to have some mature stuff to plan and run courses. You need a lot of the younger staff to come up with new ideas and to teach. And to me, the, the, the main um, asset of a head honcho, a head of department, whatever, is that they know how to bring disparate people together and keep them from killing each other <laughs> while they talk through it. But that was what was so wonderful about Goldsmiths. We would have these huge seminars with over a hundred students and maybe maybe ten or twelve members of staff. And we would have a knockdown drag out. We would argue about what we were seeing in front of us. And we slowly knocked the corners off each other and we arrived at a kind of maybe an epicenter of what we thought really mattered. Teachers are artists just like yourself, but with more experience. What do the staff do outside the college? Mr. George Bernard Shaw said, 
If you can do it, do it. If you can't, teach it. How many of the staff are part-time and really only teach for the love of it? How many depend on the college? If they're painters and sculptors, remember that they may be very good. Many famous fine artists used their teaching income for years before they were recognized. What exhibitions have their works been in? What's the staff-student ratio? But by teaching, actually teaching, doing, sorry, actually painting and doing sculptures and stuff, mm. that distinguishes you and the other, some of the other part-time people a lot from the other staff. Yes, uh, that's, that was very important to me to keep working. You know. yeah. that, that was the only reason I was teaching, actually. But if you bring people in because you think they're good educators, then they may, they, they may very well um, uh, conflict with some of the staff who are there who just want comfortable whatevers. Important signs to look for when you're looking for a course and when you're being interviewed. Staff turnover. Staff leave for many reasons, some of them very good. They're tired of the place, encouraged to leave by the college, making more money privately, or they've been promoted elsewhere. Only high turnover shows the problem. So this habit of simply arbitrarily sacking people yes. was already established? Already there. And um, Billy Hart told me she was summoned into the office, into the headmark, into the principal's office, and she was simply told, you can't teach old dogs new tricks, so I'm sacking you. She was probably doing two days a week part-time, yeah. and she promptly went off and got work at, um, at Central School, and also was a, a working sculptor. She worked um, with a monumental uh, sculpture firm in, um, in Farnham. And she had a number of commissions. Some of her commissions are in the, uh, on buildings in Guildford. So, I mean, it wasn't that she was being sacked because she was no good. Yes. She yes. was actually a, a practicing sculptor. The, the, one of the big things I think that we had and was very important was the visiting lecture program. And, you know, we had all sorts of people coming down. Bruce Lacey, we had Yoko, of course, I've mentioned, who came and tied sandwich guitars around people's ears. <laughs> How did you ever talk to her, get, get in contact with her? Well, I, I, how did I met? I met her through a friend, before, and in fact, I did a performance with her on Kings Road where we burnt plastic dolls. Um, it's sort of anti-Vietnam thing, you know. And, right, uh, right. She was quite. She's an interesting artist, I think, as Yoko. Um, mm, mm, that performance mm. she did uh, in Guildford. I thought was really good. I mean, interesting idea of putting sandwich jars around people's eyes. I thought it was a, just the, the concept of that was, was, was interesting. Yeah. Nice. She asked people to be, it was a time of talking about uh, vibrations, vibes, she said. Uh, when the vibes are, are not right, I'm not going to, you're going to ask me questions. And when the vibes aren't right, when they, whatever, the vibes, I won't, I won't answer. And, and you have to wait five minutes, <laughs> uh, you know. Yes, yes, for, yes. for the air to clear. And of course, after probably about an hour or so, there was a few of these things where she stopped, that she wouldn't answer. She pissed off and left everybody sitting there. Well, this is the thing that was so miraculous about goldsmiths. People always ask me, uh, well, were they doing sculpture or, or painting? And it was like, it was not like that. What we realized there it was very privileged where other colleges were being chopped and chopped and chopped. We were being funded directly by the Department of Education. And so we didn't get cuts. Yes. And where, where my wife here in, at Farnham, there were only 12 members of staff for a quite big de department of ceramics. We had 35 members of staff for a slightly larger uh, a, a group of, of students. But we were teaching how to think. I know that may be a bit pretentious, but it did not matter whether the person picked up a bit of paint or a bit of clay or whatever, or textiles. For a long time, I taught in the textile department there. 
because they were trying to do textile fine art. They realized that if you spend 50 hours on a piece of something or other, you can't sell it for the price of a, of a, of a tea towel. It's got to have another life. And uh, the students weren't really getting enough. They sat in on, on our seminars, quite welcome. But then they got the head of department to bring me in for a, a, a one day every other week. How often can you expect to get one-to-one -one criticism of your work? Is this defined somewhere? The prospectus? Or is it just hand-waving? I did some teaching in Carlisle, uh, and the first day I had about 15 students for a seminar. I usually would just get some students to bring up some, some work and put it up, and I would get the students to start talking about the work, yeah, yeah. and then I would, uh, uh, you know, add things. Uh, and the, in the next two or three days, it, there were 150 students there because they were hungry for uh, teaching in some depth, not just technique. Does the college have a strong fine art department? Even if you don't want to do fine art, and it doesn't, steer clear. Fine art is like yeast to the bread or a catalyst to a reaction. Fine art people have the slightly, very, odd ideas that spawn echoes in others. Without them, you will have a life of chapatis, but no cake. Cutting out things like fine art, you basically cut out the guts of a college. Well, you also cut out the guts of a civilization. I mean, yes. you know, look, we didn't talk in those grand terms then. But if you don't have uh, poetry and writing and music and, 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 and the visual arts and dance and opera in a society, you don't have a society. You need a foundation course to help you think differently. The foundation course is a German idea. It derived from the preliminary course of a famous art college in Germany called the Bauhaus. The course was started by a Swiss artist called Johannes Itten. His view was that all new art students needed to have their ideas shaken up, to stop thinking about all the ways of doing art they were used to and look for something entirely new. They were to do this by discovery and experimentation with materials, colors, and forms. In particular, they were encouraged to recognize and create contrasts. Foundation courses take you back to relearning what it is to think and feel like a child. And it's the child within you who creates. Doing something entirely new is tough. So is doing something in an entirely new way. Itten had his students experiment, for example, with different ways of making marks on paper and thinking about the emotions those marks provoke. This gave them a base from which to grow. Oh, it, it's a cliche, but you know, if you're building a pyramid uh, and you have a very, very narrow base, you can't get very tall. Does the college run foundation courses? If it doesn't, steer clear. Colleges without foundation courses just teach technicians and specialists. Do complementary studies include sports, volunteering abroad? Do you think the course will stretch your mind or your patience? Complementary studies reinforce our ability to think broadly. Music, poetry, drama, economic sociology, and film criticism expose us to different frames of reference. Do you want to go to an art college to learn football? The Complementary Studies Department, where we were encouraged to actually think much more. Yes. And think about, and I, to my mind, we were being encouraged to think about what photography was all about and and what we wanted to photograph and what photography could say and, and what photography could do in the yes, world. Yes. Where does that come in? How will you ever know what you're doing is new if you don't know what's happened before?
two in the States. There was, a, 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 you know, two great classical painters, as we now know them, Robert Rauschenberg and Jasper Johns, who'd been to a place called Black Mountain College. Yeah, yeah. And Black Mountain College had been similar. I think Merce Cunningham was there. You know, there were people from dance. There were people from poetry. Ferlinghetti went there, you know, the, 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 the beat poets. Uh, because we didn't know what art was, we didn't know what the future of art was yes. going to be for us, we didn't know how we personally fitted into it, we knew about Picasso, we knew about the Renaissance, mm. but we didn't know how we could, what, what the meat and two veg of the whole thing was. Yes. And it was that, uh, looking at things like the Bauhaus or Black Mountain, and certain things, you know, going back to Montmartre in Paris, or the Hampstead Garden suburbs of its day, mm. where different disciplines came together. At the very least, the college should be able to tell you something of the challenges you should be facing during the course. Not just the names of the projects, but what you're supposed to be learning while doing them. Listen to the replies. Are they making it up as they go along? Many, many young artists make something that looks like art, but they don't understand what art the act of making art really is. People at the top in so-called education confuse instruction with education. And they already know what you're meant to find out because it's in, in the book that they wrote or whatever it is. That is not education. Education is discovery. Uh, maybe standing on the shoulders of some, some one or two wonderful teachers or reading about some very important, uh, usefully helpful artists, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. But finally, it's up to the student to... Well, I, let me give you an example. Uh, when I was doing a stint at, at Farnham, I went into a room and I was really amazed. There were about 20 pieces of sculpture that... Uh, were obviously all done by the same person, and they weren't all that bad. So I asked about them, and that was the work of the third year. They had all been given such tight instructions that they all ended up with the same piece of art. What do you do with a society where you take art out of it? I mean, yeah. Churchill, even Churchill in the war, why are we fighting the war? We're fighting it for the artists, otherwise there isn't anything to fight for. Yes. You know, yeah. we must have this... People don't realise, they think that if they look at Tracy Emin's bed or Carl Andre's bricks, for example, that somehow it's shocking the world. Yeah. Actually, it's a groundswell of a kind of conversation that we know must continue. Whether that goes for, you know, expensive tickets at Covent Garden or, you know, an illegal rave down the road, these things must continue because they grew society together and they do provide it, every human being. Every human being wants to find joy and stimulation yeah, before yeah. they pop their clogs, you know, to the you yeah. know to the great infinity. That notion of stimulation, that notion of finding joy in things that you do or see or yeah. take part in. Is there a problem of suppliers? Is the college's IT system awful? You'll have to use it, remember. If they can't be bothered about getting that right, will you need a laptop? Which? Will you need special software? Do they know what that software is? And how much? How do you progress from year to year? Is there a constraint on the numbers? I was shocked to find that I had 24 in the first year, 24 students, but only 12 places were allocated in the second year. And I said, no, you can't do that. You know, I'm being arrogant and young. I said, if I've got 24 students in the first year, there will be 24 in the second year. They will all be absolutely fantastic. And I was told, no, they won't. You know, we've got to have them compete for their places. They've got to feel really pretty threatened. It's very important that they... They feel threatened. Mm. And, and I, I said, no, no, it's not, it's not the way it, it should go. Feedback. When you're unhappy with the way the course is run, or the quality of the lectures, how can you tell the college? Is there a process, or are you just fobbed off? 
Do they tell you if they're unhappy with you? Works both ways, but you pay them. I don't think that's a great problem. I, if I were uh, advising a young student now, I would say, go and speak to them, to someone, and make sure that you can sit in on some tutorials or seminars or whatever and see what's going on. You'll know instantly if it's them versus us, staff versus students, or if the staff really are inspiring these people. Is there an academic board with student representation? Any current disputes? How many people on the Board of Governors have no evidence, experience of, or interest in the courses the college runs? Are any of them employers of students? Your portfolio tells the school all about you, except that it doesn't. Some schools will also ask you to analyse a picture or tell them about a favourite film. I applied and um, was very excited because coming up from Devon to Guildford at that time, it, it seemed everything was so, everything seemed you know, near London and it was, I felt like a, a little sort of boy from the country and it was all seemed very sophisticated and I was a bit intimidated, but I had the interview clutching my little portfolio quite conspicuously but I was never asked to open it. I was never asked to show my work. But, and all they said to me was, well, you see that picture on the office wall up there by one of our students? What do you think of that? So they just encouraged me to talk about my reactions to the previous students' work. And that was the interview. I produced a portfolio which was full of stuff. I can still, in my mind's eye, see what was there. Mm. And some of it was original work. Some of it was copied because we were encouraged to actually make copies of things, you know, mm -hmm. posters or photographs or anything. And I had all sorts of things that went in, paintings of Charlie Chaplin, birds, and, you know, view down the garden, portraits of my parents. I mean, the whole was a complete mix. The easier it is to get into a course, the less you want to be there. The really good courses are hopelessly oversubscribed. You went for two days and you had an interview and then you did lots of things and they chose you after that. Here are some rules to remember, and you will, once you've broken them. We're all told that being focused on our work is a good thing. Really? Always? When do you see what's the other side of the hedge? and gets eclectic. Just because the course was good last year doesn't mean to say it's any good now, and vice versa. People leave, ideas change. But when you ask around, listen for the sound of teeth being sucked. Can you change your course? Are you committed to it for the next three years? So when I went to Goldsmiths, I went as a painter. I went to the painting department and I realised within weeks I think I wanted to do sculpture, which I later went on to do pretty successfully later in my life. But I said I want to do sculpture and somebody, the head of a department, then said, well, go and do sculpture. You can teach technique but not art. Technique is knowing, for example, what kinds of mark a brush or chalk or twig makes, what effect very contrasty lighting gives, what effect cutting clay with wirehouse, how to use a light meter or write a script. Art is something you learn by being set a challenging problem, trying to solve it, and then having your work criticized. And in art, criticism is essential. If you can't take it, do something else. You can't teach art. Yes. Uh, you just give right. people, you know, and the sort of art of art schools in those days, it produced a lot of musicians, a lot of bands came out of art schools, and I think that was, to me, that was very important when I was teaching in foundation. I liked people to develop whatever they were interested in, so whether it was theatre, performance, music, you know, and, we, and, and the foundation course in those days, was, we did great actually, had all sorts of possibilities people could do, and I worked in the experimental area, and we did all sorts of strange, strange things, lots of happenings, 
hmm. which would hmm. very much stick to this hat mix. Well, uh, there are many ways to make something that, uh, let's say, the unknowing can call art or sculpture or whatever. They can look in all the magazines yeah. and see something they like very much, but do it in pink instead of blue, and it becomes their concept, quote, unquote. Um, they can go to museums, see things, and take one little facet of it and make that their own. But, uh, the, and worst of all, they can design a piece of art. Now, for me, design is, now if you have to forgive me, if it, at age 84, I, I get it all a bit muddled. Uh, there is inductive thinking and deductive thinking. And design is deductive. You set a goal, what you want to, to, to end up with, and then find the way to that. But I believe that art really has to be inductive. You start with something you love, something that challenges you, something that frightens you. Uh, materials, uh, qualities, whatever it is. And you work with it. And if I can possibly explain this, if you make it happen out here, then the viewer who is at least metaphorically, standing beside you, sees the same thing happen. If you do the work in here, you have to translate it to the viewer, and you often lose quite a bit there. But if you can make a little bit of magic out there, then it's actually there. And for me, that is, um, that's the act of art. A little bit of magic is what distinguishes the formalist for saying, yep, that's a piece of sculpture I just done. From that, um, that's an idea which I just happen to have crafted in 3D. Yes, and that's, but that's, let's say that's just the first year of our, of our school to understand something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, I, I haven't found any better way of saying it. Finally, I think. Art is located within something that must be called metaphoric. This little bit of wood and paint must become about something. It must embody something. It must communicate something. And any one of those can get out of balance. It's not making a message. It's bigger than that. Um, but metaphoric is, a, is for me the epicenter where you're working with a bit of mushy clay or very hard metal, but you're actually, you have to find a way that you've got a handle on the metaphor, what it is about. And as you make manipulations with a bit of mud, you're actually adjusting the metaphor. But is this the same as making the first mark on the canvas and then the first mark on the canvas influences how you see the, the subject, whatever it is you're doing, or how you've thought of the subject and will therefore influence this next mark put on canvas and all those after that. And there, there has to be a kind of back and forth, absolutely. Right, right. so you, you start off by manipulating something, and in itself, that manipulation causes you to think of different ways of working with that thing, whatever it is. But the, 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 the impossible part of it yes. is that your eye in here is on this metaphoric. The Greek meta means change, uh, uh, for means bearing. So you're, you're taking a, a something or other and you're making it 
become about something. It's different from an Yes, yeah, but even that is, is too small because you run the risk there of, of teaching a little lesson or something like that. It's, it's, it's a kind of, and I hate this sort of witch doctorism, but it's sort of an unknowable procedure. You have to find yourself in the middle of it somehow. Maybe you have to want it so badly that if it, and it happens. Isn't art beautiful? Not necessarily. It might be quite ugly, or involve unmade beds, urinals, or rubbish. But it is a set of statements about what artists want to say, like this film. But they also have to be visually enticing. You know, they have to draw you in. I like the idea yes. of drawing someone into something that looks pretty or attractive, and yet there's a, there's something nasty in the woodpile there, <laughs> and you don't know what you're not aware of until you you've drawn into it. The, the concept's important, and I've always believed in this. And how you realise that it doesn't matter, you know, as lot well it does matter because you have to prove you have to choose the most appropriate means to realise your concept. If you don't love it, it's not worth doing. All art needs love. Beware of people who shy away from this. The thing I most remember Paul Harris saying was, he said, the way, the way things are going in the world today, there will be in the future, sometime in the future, there will be key positions in society that the only qualification that, you, that will be able to cope with this, this, these key positions will be to have had three years education in an art school. Well, but I remember Paul, Paul Harris spurring me on, uh, in a, do you think we're asking for too much? too much? And he said, never. He said that only art only comes when you aim for Mars. Don't ignore the bad signs. You're paying. You're there for three years. After that, kiddo, you're on your own. So be prepared to make a stink if needs be. Complaining when you've left is a tad late. Choosing a good college is better. Beware of people who talk about the real world. They're people who want you to think inside their boxes. Picasso and Braque and Tracy Emin all live or lived in the real world, and so does James Dyson. These people lived in a real world. They liked it so much, some of them wanted to preserve it by starting a world war. Aware of people like that? So, now you know it all and are fully prepared to enter art college. No? Nor were we. We survived. We hope we can save you a bit of anguish. You'll make mistakes as we did, but perhaps you'll find some new mistakes to make. Mm -hmm.